Hey guys, in this tutorial we're going to explore how you can use animated PNGs and GIFs in a number of different scenarios in Cartoon Animator 5. Thanks to the latest updates, you can now import these file formats into your project as elements that are already animated and use other features to enhance them. GIFs are an old school animated image format which are easy to find and download. Animated PNGs, or APNGs, are a bit newer and support 24-bit image format and 8-bit transparency, providing more vibrant colors. They also have superior compression and unlimited frame rate, which results in a smoother look. Let's start off by importing a traditional GIF to our project. Once you drag the GIF into Cartoon Animator, the first window that pops up will prompt you to determine how many times you want the GIF to loop. I'll choose Forever here. In the next window, I'll define it as a prop, and what we'll end up with is a perpetually walking sushi character. If I import in another GIF and set it for a single loop, it will be defined as a sequence type in Cartoon Animator. You'll notice in the scene manager that the forever looped prop is classified as a GIF, while the single looped is shown as bitmap. The forever looped prop will also have no motion clip in the timeline, and in the sprite editor, it'll show up as a single GIF. The single looped prop, on the other hand, will have a single clip in the timeline that can be manipulated and looped, and each frame of the GIF sequence will show up in the sprite editor, meaning you can also edit it further here. We have a dedicated tutorial that you can check out regarding sequence animation in Cartoon Animator if you'd like to learn more about that. If I want to simulate my Ikura with legs walking across the scene, all I need to do is set a transform position a bit ahead of it on the stage at a future frame since the arm and leg movements are already animated. Here you can see the result of that simple two-click position change. To add a bit of spice to that simple transform animation, you can also apply an FFD motion to the GIF. Here I'm just applying a couple of them at different points in the timeline to create a more energetic and dynamic effect. You can see that the FFD effects are applied as clips into their own dedicated track. If you have a collection of GIFs, you can quickly and easily click and drag them into your project, adjust the size and position, and continue to animate them with FFDs in a matter of seconds to create a funny animation. GIFs are a very simple format to utilize and modify in your CTA 5 project. It only takes a few seconds to create a cool animation like this. APNGs aren't much different from GIFs in terms of functionality within CTA 5. Again, all you need to do is drag the file from Explorer directly into your project. You'll notice when I bring in this APNG that the animation is a lot smoother, and we also have a wider variety of colors. This particular fireworks animation was actually exported from iClone using particle effects and exported as a PNG sequence with a transparent background. Once you do that, you can easily combine them into a single PSD file with Photoshop by using the load file into stack option from the file menu under scripts. Once that's completed, you'll want to add all of the frames into a single group, and then create a separate group with the following naming convention. Remember to place underscores between the sprite name, sequence, and order strings if you're going to export to PSD format, otherwise Cartoon Animator won't recognize it as a PNG sequence when it's imported. If you're not familiar with this process, we have a much more detailed tutorial on creating SVG and PNG sequence animations for import into CTA5. Once you follow this process in Photoshop with the correct naming conventions, you can drag your PSD directly into CTA5. You'll notice that if you right click on your prop, that it will now have an embedded animation that corresponds to the group name we saw earlier in Photoshop, which will contain all of the individual frames of the PNG sequence. In this case, we didn't change the group name, so it's simply titled Group 1. You can feel free to change that name to whatever you wish though. 
The result is a nice and smooth animation with a transparent background that can be used in a variety of scenarios. Finally, you can also create APNG files by using an APNG converting tool like APNG Assembler. Simply define the number of frames to get the smoothest result and go ahead and assemble the APNG. That's how easy it is to incorporate GIFs and APNGs into your Cartoon Animator project. There are a ton of other tools and features that you can utilize in combination with these formats, so we encourage you to explore the other tutorials and learn some more. Thanks for watching everyone, I'll see you in the next video.